The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Stuart Blumenthal. We're going to get started in about uh, 30 seconds here. We've got a couple last stragglers. I'm seeing their names or seeing they're waiting for their name on the GoToWebinar. So we'll get started in a few seconds here. Well, perfect. I uh, want to welcome everyone today. This is Esther Blumenthal from Ethosystems. I want to introduce Olivia Romer, who is going to be talking about the Sage 2020, uh, 2022. Sorry, I'm trying to remember a couple of years ago, the 2022 R2 release, which is a big release for a lot of reasons, especially around the construction edition and all the new features in there. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Olivia. All yours. Good day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. So again, my name is Olivia Romer, and we're going to go over some of the new features in the R2 release for 2022. So uh, first thing, this webinar is going to take about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, if you have any questions, make sure that you type them in the question box. Okay, so today what we're going to do is review some of the new features, and then I'm going to show you a demonstration of the project contracts, show you how to do a progress billing and a time and material billing, and then we'll have some Q&A at the end. Okay, so um, some of the uh, release or some of the enhancements in this release are dunning notices for accounts receivable. There are evergreen subscription contracts in the contracts module. There's some enhancement to inventory, uh, including fulfillment, cycle counts, and stockable kit tracking. You have expanded, uh, we've expanded the loser, sorry, we have expanded the list user experience, so it's a little bit more dynamic. And then we're going to go through um, construction project contracts and billing, which is new to the construction module. Okay, so the Dunning notices here, you can um, set up the Dunning notice level to match whatever your business needs are. So it can be um, overdue based on timing or amount ranges. And then you can also select a default email or document template that gets sent out. And these notices are based on invoice dates or due dates. And um, the Dunning notices, you can track them from the Dunning notice list. And that's on the, and the Dunning notices that have been sent are also on the customer or the invoice tab. So you will see a new tab that's available on those two um, items within Sage Intact. Um, for the contracts module, you will see the new evergreen subscription for contracts, and this gives you simplified visibility um, for the life cycle of evergreen contracts. So you'll be able to see the current contract period and history. You'll be able to streamline any of your recurring billings. You'll be able to um, have improved billing and revenue forecast reporting because of the new evergreen contracts. And you'll be able to manage your um, contract changes a lot simpler with this new evergreen. In inventory, we have the, in, the enhanced cycle counts. So now you'll be able to include zero and negative quantity on hand items. And you'll be able to assign a default dimension value on any of your reconciliations. And with stockable kit tracking, it's gonna allow you to track for parent component items on your kits. And it has a posting tab for build and disassemble kits. And with inventory fulfillment, you can pick, pack, ship, and invoice um, for the fulfillment process. And this will give you 360 degree visibility into the fulfillment um, from order into fulfillment. Okay, so the enhanced uh, list user experience. So it's been designed to be a lot more flexible and easy to use with filtering and sorting. 
And now you can modify columns, add them, resize them, freeze them, reorder them, and you can do all that with dragging and dropping. And you can also utilize a list and detailed screen combination. So you'll see here in this example, I have my AP vendors here. And then in this combination screen, I'm seeing the detail of that vendor. Now this is currently available for beta customers, um, but it will be released soon to all users. Okay, in the construction module, we now have construction projects and billings. In here, you'll be able to manage your construction projects, whether they're schedule of value progress billings or time and material billings. It gives you visibility and um, insight into the management of your change orders. It allows you to streamline the invoice creation. And you'll also be able to create AIA G702, G703 like billing formats. Okay, so now I am going to show you how we set up a contract for progress billing and then we'll take a look at a progress billing and a time and material billing inside Sage Intact. All right, so here I have my Sage Intact environment. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to jobs or projects. Your environment might see pro say projects. And you will see a new field here down at the bottom that says job projects or job contracts, sorry. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And I have two projects set up currently. I have one for time and materials and I have one for progress billings. So real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and edit this one so you can take a look. So in here, I've put in a job contract ID. This is something that you can create or you can have it do an auto generation, depending on your preference. The name of the contract, what job this is for, the customer is gonna pull directly from the job, the contract date, the type of contract this is. So in this case, this is a progress billing. And then it's gonna give me some overall summary of what I've entered into this contract. All right, and then down below, you'll notice all the line items that I have entered into this contract. So you'll see the line item description and number and the value of each individual line item. Okay, also on the billing details tab, it's gonna give you a summary of what you've built to date on this contract what the percentage build is, what your last application number is, et cetera. Okay. Um, within here, on my individual lines, I can look at all the individual lines on the contract. And if I need to, I can add additional lines to the schedule of values um, at any time. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with showing you how to create an invoice, a progress billing invoice, inside the new um, project contracts and billing. So inside the jobs or projects module, you're going to go to invoices and you're going to go to generate invoices. And here you will see a new option under the invoice by of job contracts. So you're gonna go ahead and select that. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a billing date here. And you'll notice that in the dropdown list, it's only gonna show you the two, or in my case, I have two job contracts that have been set up. So it's only going to set, show me any contracts that I have set up inside my instance of Sage Intact. So we'll start here with the progress billing. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit preview. All right, so you'll notice a couple things here. First, it's going to ask me for my invoice date and GL posting date. That should be the date that you entered in in the first screen. Um, due date is going to automatically pre-fill based on your customer settings. Um, I have the ability to 
um, edit the bill to or ship to contact here if I need to. Um, that is available for me. So I, I am going to change this real quick. Um, you can also have a purchase order reference, a message, um, any of those other things that you might want to have on your invoice. You'll notice here in the job contract summary that it will show me what my last billing application was. So I have two previous billings on this particular contract. So this one is going to be pay application number three. You also have um, some other information here under billing options. You also have a place that will show you the contract billing summary. So I can see the original contract amount. I can see any approved change orders here, and I can see my revised contract, as well as how much I've billed to date and how much retention I have held to date. Also here, I can see the total job change orders that have been applied to this particular project contract. Okay, now down below in the job contract lines, you'll notice this is my schedule of values. It's gonna show me my original SOV, any approved change orders, my revised line total, any amounts I've previously billed, my previous build um, percentage, any retention that has been held to date, and my percent to complete to date. Now, I have a couple of different options here on how I can create a billing. I can either enter an amount here in the percent to complete column. So maybe I want to change this to 35. I want to do 5% here, maybe another 15% here, and maybe I wanna change this to 20%. And then it's going to calculate the um, completed this period amount. However, I can also change this amount and it is going to back calculate the percentage for me instead. So if I'd rather bill $2,000 on this particular line item, it's going to calculate the percent for me. And you'll notice that it did that here. I also have the ability to add for stored materials. And you'll notice it has the retainage percentage as well and the retainage held this period. So if I needed to adjust any of these items, I definitely could within the billing screen. Once I have everything the way I want it, you'll notice it shows me the total down here of what I'll be billing this period, as well as the total retention held this period as well. It's also showing me the total bill to date, as well as the amount remaining to bill on this particular contract. Once I have it the way I want it, then I'm going to go ahead and click create an invoice. It's going to create that invoice for me. So now I have created that invoice and I can send that out to my customer. All right, the next one I want to show you is the time and material um, billings. So let me come again here to job or projects under invoices, under generate invoices. And again, I'm going to select job projects. And this time I'm going to select my time and material um, contract. And I'll hit preview again. Okay, so again, same information that you've seen before. I'm gonna add my billing application number. But what you will notice down below is all of my uh, line items that I have on my contract. And you'll notice all the billable cost amounts below. And these are separated out based on the cost type. So you'll notice I have some timesheet entries here and I have some accounts payable costs. Now I have set up a rate table that adds a 15% markup to all of my costs. 
However, depending on your business needs, you can have various um, markup tables that either mark up by percentage or specific dollar amounts. And these have the ability to be very granular. So you can get very detailed with these particular items. Also in here, you'll notice I have the ability to select which one of these cost items I want to bill on this invoice. So if for some reason there's something I don't want to bill yet, I can uncheck it and then it will no longer be available um, to bill or it will no longer be available for billing. And then it will stay here until the next time I generate a um, time and material billing on this particular contract. So I'm gonna go ahead and unselect these for right now. Um, these already include my markup. However, if I wanted to manually change these, maybe I wanted these to be $30 per unit, then I could manually adjust them as well. Whoops, not 300, 30. So you have a lot of flexibility within the time and materials billing. Once I have this the way I want it, then again, I'm gonna go ahead and select create invoice. And that has now created the invoice for me. What you will notice is you will see these invoices here inside order entry. I have them going to my contract invoices. And here are my two invoices that I have created. So you'll notice my time and materials billing is right here. Now, similar to your other items, these items are um, editable. So you can change the look and feel of these particular invoice documents. All right, so that has been an overview of some of the features and functionality that have been released in 2022 R2. Um, please note that our next webinars are on June 8th, July 14th, and August 11th. So you can see here the topics as well as the registration links for the next webinars that we're holding. And um, now, if you have any questions, please go ahead and type them, your questions in the question box, and I would be happy to answer them. So there was just one question that came in so far, which is about the AIA billing. Is this, they, uh, they said it's in this, in this release, will it produce an actual um, AIA form, a G702, 703 form that um, is needed for most clients? Yes, um, there will be a form that will be released shortly and you will be able to add it into your environment. And then because it is a editable form, you will be able to do things like add your logo and modify things as needed. And that will be released shortly. And a follow-up, is there any changes you need to make for that to work? Um, you will just need to add it to your environment um, and you'll be able to download that document type and add it um, inside either platform services or customization services, whichever one your environment has. Perfect. I think that don't see any other questions. So Olivia, I really wanna appreciate you uh, putting this together, spending the time uh, making sure that our team and our clients are all educated on this. Um, if you have, have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us here at Ethosystems and really appreciate everyone's time today.